The Media Dialogues, Vision 2020. As companies find their feet out of the COVID-19 lockdown, advertising agencies that service their brand building and communications needs are facing a huge challenge. Digital media that was growing the fastest has taken on even greater importance. Budgets have shrunk and marketing goals and targets are pretty fluid. All conventions are out of the window. So what are agencies doing to stay relevant? This week, Mullen Lolintas is sharing a new initiative to help their brands through this crisis. The top leadership, Virat Tandan, S. Subramaneshwar, Amir Jalil are joining us. Before we get to them, a quick word. There are two agencies, Lolintas and Mullen Lintas. And between them, they manage 300 brands. They have more than 600 people that they employ and they operate out of 13 offices across seven cities. Gentlemen, it's lovely to see all of you. Thank you very much for joining us. Hi, Anuradha. Hi. <laughs> nice to be back talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. Amit, tell us what the last three months have been like and also uh, what your specific role has meant that you've had to prioritize. The first uh, function that we, uh, obviously, that we, uh, that we had to address was people, right? Uh, how do we look after our people? I think that was our first priority. Uh, we took, uh, you know, uh, we took a call to change from uh, uh, from uh, from work from office to work from home. How do we sort of migrate the entire workforce? How do we make each person in the organization uh, useful, valuable, and contributory towards the towards the entire office? One, two. How do we, you know, because of all the challenges of this time, how do we? Uh, see to it that all our people are still connected, still with us. Uh, how do we manage that sort of big challenge? Uh, and then after that, you know, the, the challenge of business. And the challenge of business has been a challenge of uh, uh, doing business with our brands uh, for, the, for the period that we are in and uh, for, uh, to sort of plan for them for the future. Right. So multiple scenario planning, I think, you know, you may have heard from others also, but huge amount of multiple scenario planning has become part of our business. Virat, come in here. I started by introducing you all, saying, look, you all spread over seven cities, 600 people, 13 offices. Will that remain when lockdown is over and when things go back to some kind of normal? Or have you been in the thick of trying to figure out how to cut costs and how to generate revenues? So the focus has been on protecting uh, the revenue uh, and protecting uh, people. And, uh, you know, costs, uh, wherever possible, we, we kind of uh, optimize. But uh, revenue... Uh, and cost, you can only spend that much time. Mm. You know, you can't really get so obsessed about it. Sure. Uh, and so that decision we took very early that, you know, we'll, we'll uh, kind of manage it and we'll keep, uh, we'll protect the people. Uh, uh, none of the offices are uh, kind of, you know, like uh, you're, you're asking, uh, there's no question on any of that. <clears throat> but we looked at, uh, you know, how clients' needs are changing and we were constantly in touch with clients, having conversations, uh, what are they thinking? And initially, it was like nobody knew how long this thing would take, what would happen. Uh, factories were shut down, supply side was shut down. Uh, some of the clients, uh, you know, didn't didn't even want to advertise at that Absolutely, time. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, because we don't want to create demand uh, because we can't serve the demand. Sure. So I think there was a peculiar kind of uh, issues, and we spoke. And for each client, there was a different kind of solution. There were some clients who were super active anuradha actually if you look mm. at the health and hygiene and we have a lot of clients in the health and hygiene uh, as a, yeah. you know category so those teams are actually 24 by 7 so the other thing i want to talk about is uh, flexibility and agility and i think those two things really meant a lot uh, and in these times i mean usually also but in, in these special times uh, we actually uh, strengthened the teams where we saw much more action Mm. Uh, kind of redeploying some of the you know talents and some of the resources. We also took a step back and we said, okay, now what more are we going to do? Because uh, this is a very special time and it requires a special effort right. from from us. Yeah. Right. Virat, so, let me get Subhu in there. Subhu, give me a sense of what clients have been saying. What is it that you're hearing? The biggest change for us now is that the clients problems like you know clients always have problems like you know and and then we we love that like you know you have a problem now how do i as a partner go and solve those unsolved problems or toughest problems or either strategically or creatively kind of now what has happened is 
Now, these problems have got a whole lot tougher with the pandemic. And they're much bigger than what advertising can fix. Mm. Okay. Good far point. Deeper. Interesting point. Far, far deeper. Far deeper than just advertising can fix. So that's the reason. Something that we have always uh, uh, prided ourselves on that like whenever we, can mix, we have always stood for effectiveness and then and all those kinds of things that's uh, that's our legacy so well, hang on hold on to that thought because i want to pick up that point you make about the problems that people and businesses facing today seem to be deeper or are deeper than what advertising can fix virat if that is the problem then how much of an existential crisis is advertising and the business of advertising facing at this point how do you stay relevant so uh, you know to the extent that we can uh, because, because i think essentially what we have to leverage and what we've been trying to leverage is our core strength of uh, finding creative ways to solve problems right so even if you know there is a you know a, a supply of labor problem because of migrant labor which the clients are facing and ostensibly doesn't fall in the remit of uh, agencies yes uh, that is something we are looking at we believe that uh, all the creative professionals all the you know strategy professionals the communication professionals are uh, us as an industry we are people who like to put our minds to to find solutions uh, you know to issues challenges problems so that is one of the problems that we identified by talking to many clients and and uh, you know one of us uh, one of our creative leaders actually came up with uh, with a with an idea and and we are doing we are uh, doing something really good and we've actually now after building that solution gone back to some of our key clients uh, uh you know enrolling them as partners in this initiative and it's it's coming together quite well uh, i at this moment cannot reveal too much it's uh, you know has to be uh, kind of completely uh, get bolted and take off the other thing is on the in the on the front of uh, demand itself you know with uh, with many people who lost their livelihood and with many people who are unsure about the future um so yes we are seeing now and after the lockdown has been open we are seeing green shoots and clients are really seeing a lot of off takes uh, uh, as compared to the previous 3 months but will we will we come back to the original penetration will we come back to the original uh, consumption um, how long will it take uh, how how that happens that is still to be seen uh, and and it's a pretty grave situation and again Uh, we put our minds to it and along with some industry uh, colleagues uh, we've actually uh, embarked on another initiative which is which is uh, to kind of uh, see if we can put a, a task force together to fuel demand in some way amir you know we began this year saying that digital media was growing uh, the fastest it had you know almost and according to some agencies it had overtaken print media in terms of the share of the ad pie and in terms and you know from any account it was right there next to television in terms of its share of the ad pie now that was already happening in the last 3 months uh, what is the kind of uh, learnings or understanding of digital media that the covid experience and the lockdown has brought forward hey, uh, anuradha we've stopped seeing digital as a separate thing altogether and yeah. i think all of us need to you know completely come to terms with this hmm. that there is no real digital it's the way of the world the world is living in a certain way business has to live in that way marketing has to live in that way advertising has to live hmm. so i mean digital what is digital digital is nothing except a way that people interact with uh, with uh, a certain medium it uh, how they interact with each other how they would like to interact with products and services that's digital and and all is all you have to do is you have to be in line with the with the people hmm. if the people are going to be on uh, you know are going to be doing uh, certain apps then you have to know how to take yes. uh, advantage of so i mean you know it's passe uh, you know f- hmm. frankly you know where advertising changes okay uh, through this entire uh, lockdown how we started looking at self two big uh, sort of challenges that i felt uh, mm. one is on the uh, on how we, uh, an agency should, should look at itself and the second is you know what to do with creative culture so tell me tell me your answers to both those points yes yeah, yes yeah. so first is see agency may say advertising we should remove <laughs> okay yeah. 
number one, we are no longer an uh, advertising agency. Yeah. We, you can call us a brand agency. You can call us a consumer agency. You can call us, uh, even you can even call us a strategy agency. I don't care. Hmm. Please don't call us a creative agency. Hmm. Okay. We are not just about creative. We are about solutions, hmm. right? Hmm. And all our solutions that were linked to marketing, hmm. now we have to change and say that our solutions are linked to business. Right. We are completely in the service of business. Hmm. And, you know, small things like nuances and those are part of our thinking and insights are a part of our thinking. Only thing is, we used to look at an insight and we used to say, is ka dialogue kaisa must banane ka? Hmm. Hmm. Pull. I mean, you know, that's gone, right? Yeah. I mean, the dialogue kaisa banane ka is gone. Chota sa insight mila, how to make business benefit hmm. from that chota sa insight. Hmm. Whether you're going to use it digitally, whether you're going to use it, you know, on TV or press, don't care. Mm. We don't care. Mm. But make it use, use, useful for business. So that's that's one part that we have realized for ourselves what our role is in the world. Okay? And no, it's, it's like we are going beyond marketing. Mm. Really. One part. Second part, uh, coming to the, coming to our, uh, you know, our uh, own culture. Uh, as, uh, as you know where we came from as an agency yes so look uh, you know we sort of uh, harmed ourselves okay mm. uh, in the in in the sort of run up to the lockdown and i mean if the human if the human tragedy of the lockdown was not this much mm. uh, you know keeping that part aside i would say i'm thankful for mm. this you know i'm thankful that the business uh, that, that the lockdown has given a sort of uh, time to think again, to reset ourselves. Mm. And creatively, what I would like to say is, look, uh, there was a time, say 10 years ago, five years ago, where a lot of clients used to look at us in a different sort of way. They used to say, these guys come from a very different culture. Mm. They talk differently. They, they dress differently. You know, they are a little mad. They, they this, And what we did over the last, you know, few uh, years is we became like the clients. Mm-hmm. And we, dis- we we integrated our culture into the client's culture. Now we have got a chance to reset. And when we reset, we don't want to go back to that culture. We don't want to go to go back to the coffee and cigarette. Mad and, men, you don't you know, want to be mad men. No, no. But but we want to relook at our culture. Mm-hmm. We still we want to become a culture where again we are looked at as mad scientists. Mm-hmm. I don't care. As uh, social experimenters, I don't care. Hmm. Anybody, anything of human value, hmm. but, you know, completely different from what our clients are. Hmm. Hmm. So creatively, culture-wise, we want to change our culture completely. Treat us with value hmm. because the things that we'll see for you hmm. will improve not just, uh, you know, your uh, brand, your marketing, your equity. They will, you know, they will change your business completely. I'm hearing of this initiative, uh, you, what you all are calling restart and restrat. Restart and yeah. restrat. What does that mean? What really does this mean? Because, you know, what categories have potential right now? Like Amir said, please don't talk yeah. about digital media. You know, it's passe. It's, it's all the ecosystem we inhabit. So when I read the, what Mota Mota, this initiative is about, take away, strip away the generalities and give me two, three points that really are a value proposition for clients. All clients know and we know that the stakes are very high and the decision decisions that whether the clients are we as partners together need to make one thing is clear is may have ramifications for for quite a few few years or perhaps even decades let me stick my neck out on that on this and say that and what we said is as clients try to manage their way through the crisis they, they need a way they need a way a new way to link current new moves to future outcomes so that's where we created this uh, restart and restrap. Sure. What's clear is that COVID-19 is the biggest global event and challenge of our times and is decisively changing human attitudes and behaviors. And it is not stopping there. It's perhaps changing values and belief systems too. Whenever something of this magnitude happened, they have forced human beings to break from the past and imagine the world completely new. 
And we, what we found is this one is not going to be anything different. If, if I have to give you a couple of illustrations, even look at when Spanish flu, which we all keep talking about 100 years back when it happened, it centralized the public health care systems. It brought in employer insurance schemes. And before that, if I, if I go to Black Death, how they brought in labor, labor reforms. World War II resulted mm -hmm. in more joining workforce or, or, or SARS brought in rise of e-commerce and all. So we looked at all kinds of recessions and downturns. Mm. Many times like now we tend to get caught in, okay, this is my brand and this is what marketing is. What do I do with my consumer and all? But you've got to look at the macro factors. All macro factors have an influential role even before I come into, into that. We looked at the macro factors and from the macro factors, looked at the analysis of the industries that will do well, industries like essential savings, health and wellness, at home entertainment, Entertainment, education, online education, they are well. What are the broad paths on which you will set us, given the background that you've illustrated so beautifully? We need to look at the factors that will affect us as human beings first, even before I look at the, them as consumers and consumption behavior. And when something does well, a particular brand does well, oh, it's a great product and great advertising and all. Yes, that's good. You need to have great ad and great product. But even before that, the consumer sentiment is more important. How does the consumer feel from inside? How optimistic is he about the future and all? Because that has taken a dent. So trust yeah. multiplier, uh, you know, part of being a health ecosystem, localization, home as epicenter, brand purpose. So you want yeah. to, and hyper engagement. You know, I've just sort of, I've had the privilege of reading a little bit of what you all have in mind. So you want to just quickly go through one or yeah. two of these points? Typically, like the marketers always look at, like we look at, we try and segment the audience on either lifestyle or demographics and all those things. It is important at this point of time, even those segments, those 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 uh, segments get bigger lens through which we need to look at them because people are subjected to extreme conditions. We try to look at the mindsets when people are subjected to extreme economic environments, how would they respond? Those form the bigger lens. And through those lens, we try to look at like you know, how we can uh, look at our audience and how we can relate with them through our brands. And what we came up with is what we're calling it a hyper engagement model. Okay, what is important is, okay, it's on three axes like you no. Know, how, what one is about hyper retain how do i retain my audience one is about second one is about hyper reframe the third i call it the hyper reinvent okay it is these three things and then and then marrying it with a suite of lot of proprietary tools that we have strategic tools and how we can find uh, the point that amir was saying not just about offering your product but how that phase is over that phase is over where I can I can do humble hype with the audience. That's over. People now need not just products, they need solutions. Virat, how tough is it going to be to, uh, to keep getting new business? Will there be much new business? Will the challenge be to hold on and grow what business you already have? Give me a sense of the business space for the agency uh, at this point of time. Um, so definitely, I think... Uh, priority is to to hold on and to uh, consolidate uh, you know with with the current clients while we are pitching and there's a lot of new business activity i'm i'm actually i was surprised looking at the number of pitches that are coming our way uh, the decision making is 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 maybe uh, slower much slower than you know what uh, what it could have been um, so i i'm not 100% sure how much of new business conversion is going to happen in the next few months mm -hmm. um, uh, but i think the way uh, last month has been very different anuradha from the the earlier three months i think now things are opening up now uh, clients are really planning their uh, their journeys their initiatives a uh, lot of uh, new opportunities coming our way because you know clients are getting into they've kind of read the market uh, some clients are getting into new territories etc so that that's really the other thing uh, the bigger um, opportunity for us actually is to now, uh, you know, get into more and more execution uh, of our ideas uh, through content, through influencer, through production. So I think that's the real uh, uh, job right. for us, I think, in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Um, so that's where we are focusing a lot. Um, 
the time to time the are next are you managing to hold on to all the people you have because that's a big pressure with all agency uh, you know leaders that have been speaking to the big priority seems to be how do we keep all our people how do we keep jobs secure given that all of you all are part of large international uh, networks that are listed and are quite ruthless about the kind of uh, numbers they have to show at the stock exchanges there yeah i mean uh, we have we haven't seen any departures and the plan is to uh, hold on to everyone and to actually help everyone grow actually through this not just hold on amir give me a dialogue yeah i know it's advertising is no longer about dialogues and you guys are no longer the mad men but give me a dialogue especially when you know some of your big brands biggest brands today are reimagining themselves renaming themselves if i can take the name glow and lovely where are we going to see new advertising give me a dialogue look uh, anuradha i i'll tell you i'll give you a dialogue also and i'll tell you uh, what i feel about this i i think uh, uh while we are sitting here and we are talking about uh, roughly uh the changes that are coming in the way of business and marketing and brands and things like that i think as an industry uh we are not looking at ourselves enough okay mm. and uh, uh i would really like to use this opportunity once you know we are out of this or somewhere around this where we all get together and make this industry stronger you know this industry has been too much about backbiting bickering little little things small uh, sort of you know associations between people and stuff like that and it's it's been the se the second thing it's been about is about you know fighting at award functions trying to uh, sort of uh, win uh, uh, and go up uh, the award sort of list mm. right i think as an industry uh, you know the whole industry needs to sort of uh, you know swim upstream so not not going to let on anything on glow and lovely <laughs> <laughs> are you going to say watch this space look uh, it's a lovely little challenge mm. uh, for us uh, we have uh, really been delicately sort of handling this this beautiful little brand uh, that has been in our hands and of course the evolution of it is in no small measure due to our sort of uh, collaboration and our understanding of the uh, category and uh, again once again you know we will uh, we will be contributing in a huge sort of measure in how this brand and you will it will surprise you sure it'll i look forward to that i would like to be surprised yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, subhu yeah. you want to close quickly to my mind one one big uh, difference between this crisis and any other crisis that had happened earlier and rather is the world has never been so young okay today 32% of the world's population are z between 1995 and 2010 and another 31 and half percent are millennials uh, post 1982 so that 63 and half percent are less than 38 years old and the, it, it hasn't been so young before and this generation is different because they are lot more demanding and clearly the studies say that now all the ones that are happening for the, the studies on purpose and all post the crisis and as as high as 57% of young people believe brand should use it advertise raise awareness of certain ethical issues now because see what had happened is during the pandemic the role for the private sector on the front line is increasingly clear because government central banks and the world health organization or whoever they cannot defeat the disease alone it yes. cannot happen yes because covid-19 will accelerate the trend towards brand purpose made visible through experiences and that's counseling. really interesting and yes brands have to take stances brands have to take stances i'm looking forward to seeing the stances that brands take there's a big one you know amir has just said uh, you know said look out for what we are going to do there so we are going to look out brands have to take stances and that's a good point to end this conversation on it was lovely talking to you gentlemen stay safe and hopefully we'll be able to catch up in person face to face one of these days soon good luck thank you thank you i am rather lovely thanks for having us and uh, stay safe Thank you and thank you very much for watching. We'll be back again with another conversation on the media dialogue soon, so stay tuned. The Media Dialogues Vision 2020